Hello and welcome back. If you missed my last video, I talked about my top 20 albums of 2023. This time, I'm going to give some opinions and hot takes on some other popular albums from last year. First thing, I'm going to react to WMUC's top 20 list of 2023 because my friend Justin suggested I react to it and Justin is the head of the music team which put this list together. I'm going to link it in the description if you want to check out some of the awesome write-ups that the WMUC team did. It's much better than my short descriptions. If you don't know WMUC, this is the University of Maryland's freeform radio station. I used to be a DJ. I had a show called It's Indie in It where I played British indie rock. WMUC is sick and you can listen to it online. It's a much more fun way to discover music than through algorithmically generated Spotify playlists in my opinion. Also forewarning, I'm going to be a little bit rude. Some negative opinions may be exaggerated for comedic effect. I got nothing against you if you like this stuff and for most of it, I understand the appeal. All right. Here we go. Number 20 is again by One O Tricks Point Never. I never listened to this one because I was under the impression that it was like movie soundtrack style electronic music but more experimental. It seems like it is more interesting than that in reality and even has vocals but it's too late. I've already decided that it's boring. Number 19 is We Buy Diabetic Test Strips by Arm and Hammer which is a duo between Billy Woods and like Euclid like the mathematician or someone and I skimmed through a handful of these tracks and nothing caught my attention so I didn't listen to it doesn't really seem like my thing 18 is star one by ram cap duoy i don't speak vietnamese so i'm not gonna try and pronounce that this is basically like if flume didn't make any pop music and just made ambient stuff with the occasional like breakbeat jungle tracks thrown in to keep you on your toes to be fair flume already does make more ambient songs but i usually don't listen to those ones number 17 is crash recoil by surgeon this is a techno album i wouldn't mind it if it was put on but a bit too repetitive for me me, did not listen to this one. Number 16 is Ooh Rap I Ya by George Clanton. George Clanton, this man has looked at 19 for the past 15 years. He's on like his 10th album now though, so I know he's not 19. He is not George Clinton, um, in case you were confused. His last album had sexy rats on the cover. You're probably wondering, what are these two sexy dogs with a bong looking at? Well, let's find out. Oh. They're looking at me and Nick Hexum as dog people, smoking a legal herb uh, on the beach. He must have been around a while, but I only heard about him first in like 2020. His newest album is called Ooh Rap I Ya, one of the worst album titles ever. This album is basically overblown shoegaze adjacent synth pop with hip hop beats. It sounds like it should be good, but I found this album to be generally just okay and often kind of annoying. I don't know what trip hop is, but this might be it. 15 is Scaring the Hose by JPEG Mafia and Danny Brown. I definitely listen to other genres of music more than rap, so I guess you could say I'm not the biggest rap fan in that regard, but I'm definitely going to be more into rap songs that are more alternative, more electronic, or just anything with an interesting beat. And on this album, the beats are absolutely crazy, and it's a ton of fun. 14, The Land is Inhospitable, and So Are We by Mitski. I listened to this, and I was like, it's cool that she committed to the vibe for a whole album, but this is the worst Mitski album I'm not going to listen to anymore. Again. I did listen to it again though and I was far too harsh. It's probably like a lower middle tier Mitski album but the main problem still stands. Yes it's very pretty and definitely an enjoyable listen. A good album but this is Mitski. There's nothing interesting or unexpected about this album and it's just so understated. It's not like emotionally moving in the way a Mitski album should be. Even if you ignore all the layers and like pop songs on the newer albums if you go back to her old stuff. Stuff like Liquid Smooth, Pearl Dye, Danish sweetheart, that's Mitski. And I don't care if, um, actually, if you listen to the lyrics, technically she's really sad. This is background music for a cocktail party, not music to cry to. You can enjoy this album, but that's not why I listen to Mitski. 13 is Dog's Body by Model Act Truth. This is a post punk band, and instead of having more typical guitar, it's a lot of distorted noise. A bit similar to Gilla Band, it still has the quintessential post punk driving drums and bass, though. It's got a very quirky energy to the vocals, bit of a creepy vibe. We used to get similar music to this from artists like Squid and Black Country New Road until they decided that post-punk was too mainstream for them. A smart move for Black Country but a shame for Squid because their fallout was significantly worse than their debut specifically due to this reason. And if you're wondering what all the other post-punk bands are doing right now, most of them are making some kind of grotesque cross-genre fusion of model act truth type music, synth pop, and British indie rock. So an album like this is actually quite refreshing. The last leg loses me a tiny bit though. 12 is Burning Desire by Mike. This is a kind of experimental jazzy hip-hop album. I assume this is the kind of thing MF Doom fans 
are probably into. I don't know. I didn't listen to it though because it just sounded okay to me. 11 is Nebulous Day by Della Zier. I heard this was only an EP though, so I did not dedicate my precious album only time to this. Sorry, Justin. 10 is Mechama de Gatu Ke Eu Sao Sua. I can't speak Portuguese. I don't want to speak Portuguese again, so I'm going to say it's by Anna Electric Chicken. This is basically like a funky, dancey Brazilian album. It's pretty fun. I liked it, but I definitely wasn't blown away. I think it's kind of overrated, to be honest. 9 is La High by Sampha. This is like an alternative R&B album with some jungle and UK garage influences. Sampha's got a great voice. I didn't end up listening to this one, but I'm going to assume it's solid. 8 is Soft Scars by Yule. You already know what I think about this because I talked about it in the last video. It's amazing. 7 is 3D Country by Geese. Quirky rock, weird vocals, some country influences. There's some decent songs, but overall, I did not find this to be a very captivating listen. 6 is Trip Love Ellipsis 3 question marks by Tizra. This is an alternative R&B album. Understated vocals and electronic beats have an odd combination of piano overlaid with shitty quality trap drums. It sounds bad and I can't pick out any songs as amazing standouts, but the bad vocals mixed with the bad beats. I wouldn't say it's like insanely amazing, but it's got this hypnotic quality and it is 100% a vibe and maybe that's too negative but i liked it five is javelin by sufjan stevens i've heard a few of his songs before i've enjoyed them but i never thought it was life-changing if i sat down and listened to this i probably would like it but the three songs i've heard from him didn't do anything for me i'm still kind of confused who alex g is but i'm pretty sure this is just hi-fi alex g and i've never heard an alex g song i liked enough to want to hear twice but apparently this is like the most beautiful album ever made or something though so if you're into beauty maybe this up your alley. Four is Cartwheel by Hotline TNT. Cartwheel is a perfectly fine album, but I think number four of the year is definitely too high. Cartwheel is like indie rock for people who, when you ask them the type of music they listen to, they say indie rock. But the catch here is that Cartwheel is also shoegaze. The problem here is that indie rock tends to be quite catchy, whereas shoegaze consists of a catchy guitar riff in the first five seconds, followed by three minutes of a song you're never going to remember no matter how many times you listen to it. So I do wish this album were more catchy, but at least in classic shoegaze style, when it's on, it's pretty enjoyable. Three is a mutual ground by Default. Default is an ex-shoegaze band from China. Now they make folksy pop with very lush instrumentation. It's a sound I've heard from Chinese bands before, but never executed quite as well as it is here. It's definitely pretty, but it's too boring for my taste. I like it, but when it comes on, I'm usually inclined to skip it. Number two is Maps. Maps is a hip-hop album by rapper Billy Woods and producer Kenny Seagal. I was worried I wouldn't like it because the other Billy Woods album, We Buy Diabetic Test Strips, I didn't find appealing, but I love this. It's right up my alley. The production is amazing, often jazzy, and the rapping fits really well to the beats. This is my hip-hop album of the year without a doubt. And WMEC's number one album of the year 2023 is Rats All God by Wednesday. Rats All God is a very, very cool album with some really good songs on it, but still, I definitely enjoy this album a lot less than the Rap Boys album that came out this year. Rap Boys is not nearly as loud as this, but it's probably the closest thing that I listened to Rats All God this year. Post country, whatever, whatever. All right, okay, as for the people's poll, I'm not going to respond to all of these, but let's knock this out quickly. Jane Remover, I haven't been too crazy about any of the Jane remover songs i've heard before but the vocals on this album were so obnoxious i didn't listen to it caroline polachek i didn't listen to much chairlift but the opener is awesome and gives me similar like indie pop vibes the rest of the album though is so not for me it sounds so synthetic especially bunny as a rider it's just too like perfect and clean sounding it sounds so manufactured but it is pretty so i I guess I understand. I don't know. I didn't really like this one much. Pink Pantheress, when I first heard her, I thought she was so interesting because of how British her music is, taking jungle drum and bass and garage and then combining it with a super strong British accent. But the twist was that the beats were so chill and the vocals sound so nonchalant. The entire formula is awesome, but I've always been mainly interested in the production and her lyrics and personality have always been a background instrument to me. But here they make Pink the focus and the the music takes a backseat, which is kind of a shame because her biggest impact has been all these American artists making chill UK garage and drum and bass songs. Taylor Swift, not a 2023 album. 
Hozier, I found the second album significantly less exciting than the first already, and I didn't care for the singles either, so I skipped this one. SZA, this is not a 2023 album either. Lil Yachty, I love Pink Floyd, so I thought Black Seminole was great. The other songs were decent, but I wasn't really compelled to return to them. Boy Genius, I liked it a lot more than Punisher by Phoebe Bridgers, but I definitely liked it less than Home Video by Lucy Dacus. The thing with Home Video is that the storytelling really draws you in immediately, and this did not do that as much. I'm sure the lyrics are good, but I was too lazy to pay attention, and I only listened to it once, but it was a solid album. Okay, now for a few random album opinions. I saw people hyping up Group Therapy, which I thought was a really solid alternative hip-hop album, and I saw people hyping up Water From Your Eyes, and I thought half the songs, like Buy My Product, are these really sick-ass creative post-punk songs, and the other half is underwhelming experimental stuff, which kind of reminded me of that Jockstrap album for 2022, which I just did not really get the hype for. This is decent, though. Also, the album covers fire. Pierce the Veil, I really liked most of these songs, and I returned to them, but as a full album, it doesn't have enough energy to not it's an album in the way that I Became Birds by Home Is Where is an album. Like, you can say it's an album, but I can also choose not to believe you. It is really good, though. She went more electronic, which is what I wanted, but I do wish it were more experimental. Enter Shikari. This is probably the second worst Shikari album. The worst is Mind Sweep, by the way. I don't care if that's a hot take. I hate how self-referential this album is. Instead of dropping new iconic lyrics, they constantly reference old lyrics or old song titles. It's too much. I will say, though, on this album, the rock and electronic elements of Enter Shikari have fused perfectly into one in a way which is surprisingly kind of new for the band. The guitars and drums all sound like supercharged. It's also louder than the last two albums, which is nice, even if the last two albums were both amazing. I did like it overall, though. Okay, people were loving these albums, but I thought they were overrated. Corinne Bailey Ray, she had like a hit song 15 years ago, and then, I don't know, now she's back and everyone's talking about her because she dropped this really artsy album, and it's got some cool moments, but I wasn't that impressed with the individual tracks. Lorraine, the title track of this album was painfully unlistenable. Squid, I already covered this not post-punk enough. Jeff Rosenstock, I've never been a huge fan of his vocals, but I like most of his past stuff, No Dream, Post, Worry. But with this, there's some solid songs, especially near the start, but a handful of songs are pretty rough, pretty cringy, not the biggest fan of the overall package. Okay, some honorable mentions, Luminism, Emo Band, Distinct Sound. This is like my 21st place. They're awesome. Initiate, I don't listen to that much hardcore, but I like this Initiate album a lot. Cass is Dead, cyberpunk-themed UK hip-hop album. Kill the Noise and ISO EXO both had really solid electronic albums. Pigeon Detectives, they're old at this point, but it's just solid British rock and way better than their last album. 2023 was also kind of like the year of the short album for me, like 30 minutes or less and usually 10 songs max. I was really into it this year. Pale Hound, Bed Chamber, Home Is Where, Girl Gang, Initiate, Feeble Little Horse, As A Sketch Pad, Pigeon Detectives, Tanuki-chan, Tanashe. Okay, two final things. Gonna talk about 2022 and then 2024. So, these are the additions to my 2022 top album list. I like the Noah Khan Stick Season album a lot. This album has really blown up and it's been a bit polarizing. Some people think it's generic stomp holler lumineers type beat. This may be partly true but i still think it's really enjoyable the song all my love might sound like it was made so that ninth graders could play it poorly on ukuleles but it's still my favorite song i've had it on repeat for a while the Glitch Mob lost one of their members becoming a duo and decided to completely switch up their style on Control Alt Reality. And this time they're making real club bangers. And I know what you're thinking. EDM duo switching their signature style on their fourth album so that they can make proper dance music? What is this? The Last Good Night by Odessa? No, this is an incredible album. Mostly jungle influences, but also house garage and more. It might be lacking a very tiny bit in variety, but I still definitely think this album is incredible. Another one would be guitar music by Cording. Cording makes really funny and creative post-punk here, relying heavily on electronic elements. They even got some Britpop influence, which definitely makes them stand out among their peers. It's not that other British post-punk bands are against pop music, it's that at the core of this influence, there's something so sugary and radio-friendly that it goes against the anti-establishment ethos of most of these bands. Which, to go on a tangent, on their most recent album which just came out, Cording follows further down this path, casting the post-punk aside to focus on 90s Britpop and 2000s garage rock combining guitars with an absurd level of autotune and silly lyrics. This pissed off most critics and many fans of their debut. I can't help but admire them though for sticking fully to the bit, especially since their debut was criticized by many for being all over the place and not having a clear and unique style. I'm not as impressed by New Last Name as their debut guitar music, but it still is pretty enjoyable and has a lot of great songs. As for other 2022 albums, I think that's it. I liked Asphalt Meadows by Death Cab for Cutie and The Alchemist Euphoria by Cassini. 
Sabian a lot, but definitely a lot less than everything on my top 20. You could add them as honorable mentions, I guess. Okay, the last thing, albums I'm excited for in 2024, Glass Beach is already out and it's insane. British Rock, we got Seagirls, Corella, Home County's Masterpiece, The Snuts, Yard Act, and of course, New Kasabian. The No Tom, No Kasabian crowd is annoyed that they're making poppy music like this, but I'm not complaining. Easy is the second best song on 4813. Sometimes the fans are wrong. That's okay. If we want to talk overrated Kasabian songs, it's fire. I said it. I won't take it back. Also, tangent on supposed overrated Kasabian songs, so many people cannot stand bless this acid house at all why does it make people so angry i was thinking oh it must have been like inescapable when it dropped because i wasn't there i wasn't british back in 2017 but if you check spotify it's the fifth biggest song on the album anyway we have a nia archives album coming up tanache might be dropping something this year nero is back it's gonna be absolutely insane screw lakes might be releasing two more albums this year probably at least one if wolfie and gartner really drops this album it might be album of the year supposedly 2024 might be the year Zed finally returns. It's been almost nine years since he was any good, but I'm curious. Maybe he's back. Zoo's about to drop. I love that guy. He already put out like seven songs, and it's better than the second album, but probably worse than the third album. It's less EDM-y than the last album. I like the new stuff, but this album is supposedly going to be like over 20 songs long, which is too many songs. His last album, it was originally normal length, and then like a year later, he was like, oh, all those other songs, like they're all on it now, and then the track list is like fucked up and then here's a saxophone outro but like he took a year to do that and admitted it was deluxe because scene is coming out very soon and going off the teasers he is back after an underwhelming sophomore album he actually released a much more exciting ep a little after that album which had rock and old school post-punk influences so i'm not that surprised he's got some goth sounding vocals on this album as far as i know the weekend will not be on this one but i mean if he puts able on industrial track i would fuck with it also also, speaking of French electronic music, people are hyped for this new upcoming Justice. I'll listen to it, but realistically, I have no interest. I'm not excited for it at all. Yes, Cross is an insanely good album. The other two, though... I haven't listened to them. I'm not going to listen to them. I know they're significantly worse than Cross. It doesn't mean they're not good, but I'm not fucking listening to them. The last album was like eight years ago, okay? Give me more time. Maybe I'll change my mind. But also, one of the guys did a solo album like two years, and I got bored. I turned it off. I never listened to that one either. 